Hello, my name is Gino Francesconi. I am the director of the Archives and the Rose Museum, and we are celebrating our 120th anniversary here at Carnegie Hall. And so I thought I'd like to take you back to opening night of 1891, and I'll show you some of the more rare treasures we have here. Ground was broken in 1889. This is the silver trowel that Mrs. Carnegie used to lay the cornerstone. And it says, with this trowel, Mrs. Andrew Carnegie laid the cornerstone of the new music hall building, southeast corner, 57th Street and 7th Avenue, New York, May 13th, 1890. Andrew Carnegie stood uh, right next to his wife, Louise, and proclaimed that this hall will intertwine itself with the history of our country. Now, it's amazing because the corner of 57th Street and 7th Avenue, while it's midtown today, on May 13th of 1890, it was three and a half miles north of Midtown, the 14th Street area. That was Midtown. It was the heart of the city. People weren't really sure um, if this was going to be a success or not. It was a, an extraordinarily large building in a, in a quiet neighborhood. This is really one of our treasures. It's one of the few drawings we have in uh, the architect's hand. Now, the interesting thing about the architect is that he had never designed before a concert hall. William Burnett Tuthill was only 34 years old. Extraordinary when you think the chance that Andrew Carnegie took with this young architect. The history of acoustics was just beginning at this time, but Tuthill was an amazing cellist. The detailing was extraordinarily simple. I, I like to say sometimes, if you walked into the Home Depot of the day, the details that are in the hall were the ones you would have found in the box three for a dollar. In fact, if you look at some of these wreaths that are in the boxes, they're on every other keyhole in Park Slope in Brooklyn. And yet, the magic that the architect created by his simplicity was stunning. So Tuesday, May 5, 1891 arrived. This is one of the more valuable items we have. It's a program for the opening week festival. What they did was they invited the most famous musician of the day, Tchaikovsky. Opening night was totally sold out. In fact, one article says the ushers were getting as much as a dollar and a half to let people sneak in. Just a glimpse of Tchaikovsky. Opening night audience, they saw the entire New York Oratorio Society on stage, and the oration began. Damrosch conducted the Leonore Overture Number no. 3 of Beethoven, and then Tchaikovsky was now going to come out and conduct the March solo now. The next day, the newspapers were filled with praise. Everyone from the beginning was already saying this actually could become the center of New York's cultural scene. To me, it's, a, it's as an, an American a story as any immigrant coming to this country and making it big. I mean, imagine, uh, what are the chances of a poor location, an inexperienced architect, coming up with uh, one of the greatest concert halls in the world? Mm -hmm. 